to start with, let me give you the different objectives of our lesson for today. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to first, define Afro-Asian literature. Second, enumerate characteristics of Afro-Asian literature. Third, be familiar with the countries included in Afro-Asian. Fourth, analyze literature as a mirror to a shared heritage of people with diverse background. Fifth and the last one, explain how literature establishes global peace. Before formally starting with the discussion, let us first have a game. You are to look closely at the landmarks and try to identify them. Name the country to where each is found. For our first landmark, it is composed of four words. The first word starts with letter G. The second word starts with letter S. The third word starts with letter O. And the last word starts with letter G. What do you think is the name of the landmark? The landmark is the Great Sphinx of Giza. This landmark is found in a country that is starting with letter E. What do you think is the name of the country? Great Sphinx of Giza is found in Egypt. The Great Sphinx is among the world's largest sculptures. It features a lion's body and a human head adorned with royal headdress. The statue was carved from a single piece of limestone, and pigment residues suggest that the entire Great Sphinx was painted. According to some estimates, it would have taken about three years for 100 workers using stone hammers and copper chisels to finish the statue. Again, our first landmark is the Great Sphinx of Giza in Egypt. For the second landmark, its name composed of two words. The first word starts with letter D. The second word starts with letter M. What do you think is the name of the landmark? This landmark is the Taj Mahal. It is found in a country that is starting with letter I. What do you think is the country? Taj Mahal is found in India. The Taj Mahal is an immense mausoleum of white marble, built in Agra between 1631 and 1648 by the order of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his wife Mumtaz Mahal. The Taj Mahal is the jewel of Muslim art in India and one of the universally admired masterpieces of the world's heritage. Again, our second landmark, the Taj Mahal in India. For our third landmark, we have a landmark composed of three words. The first word starts with letter B. The second word starts with letter R, and the last word starts with letter T. What do you think is the name of this landmark? This landmark is known as the Benawe Rice Terraces, and it is found in a country that is starting with letter P. What do you think is the name of this country? Of course, Benawe Rice Terraces is our very own and is found in the Philippines. The Benawe Rice Terraces is a system of irrigated rice terraces in the mountains of north-central Luzon. 
These were created more than 2,000 years ago by the Ifugao people. In 1995, various sections of the terraces were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site, described as a living cultural landscape of unparalleled beauty. Again, our third landmark, the Benawi Rice Terraces in the Philippines. For our fourth and last landmark, we have a two-word landmark. The first word starts with letter V, and the last word starts with letter F. What do you think is the name of this landmark? This landmark is the Victoria Falls, and it is found in a country that is, is starting with the letter C. What do you think is the name of this country? Victoria Falls is found in Zimbabwe. The Victoria Falls is one of the biggest and most awe-inspiring waterfalls in the planet. Very good! You are able to identify all the landmarks and name the country to where each is found. Again, the Great Sphinx of Giza is found in Egypt. The Taj Mahal is found in India. The Benawa Rice Terraces is in the Philippines, and the Victoria Falls is found in Zimbabwe. Now, what do these landmarks have in common? Well, they are all found in countries belonging to the African Asian countries. Meaning to say, our topic for today will be revolving around the African and Asian or Afro-Asian. But what about this Afro-Asian? What about this African-Asian? I prepared another activity for you. Identify the word being described by the group of words below. So the word that you are going to identify is starting with letter L. Let me read to you. It is a body of written works it is imaginative works of poetry and prose distinguished by the intentions of their authors and the perceived aesthetic excellence of their execution. Lastly, it may be classified according to a variety of systems, including language, national origin, historical period, genre, and subject matter. What do you think is the word being described? It is great. It is literature. So today we are going to talk about the introduction to Afro-Asian literature. Africa is considered to be the second largest continent in the world with a total area of around 11 million square miles that account for 5.7% of the Earth's surface as well as 20% of the total surface of land in our planet. It is considered by many scientists to be the origin of mankind. It is a continent of native peoples, cultures, economies, and history. It has a rich geography as well as an interesting history, thus making it a continent with such biodiversity. This is the map of Africa. There are 54 countries as well as quite a few disputed territories. Sudan used to be the largest country in Africa until it was split into Sudan and South Sudan. Algeria is now the largest African country by geographical area. In 
Asia is the world's largest and most diverse continent. It has a total area of 17,226,200 square miles, roughly one-third of the land surface of the Earth. It is the most populous continent in the world. And this is the map of Asia. There are 48 countries in Asia that are recognized by the United Nations. The largest country is Russia by landmass, even though roughly 40% of the country belongs to European continent. So this is Africa and Asia. Their neighboring continent is Europe. Afro-Asia or African-Asian literature is literature that encompasses the cultural and political world of people with both African and Asian heritage. It does not only tackle African heritage alone, but also Asian heritage. Afro-Asian literature mirrors not only the customs and traditions of African and Asian countries, but also their philosophy in life, which on the whole are deeply and predominantly contemplative and hauntingly sweet. Contemplative means filled with deep and serious thought about things, meaning to say, Afro-Asian literature is also showing the different thoughts and experiences people of the two continents have aside from their customs and traditions. Afro-Asian literature is the reflection of the storm and the stress of developing nations seeking a place under the sun, which every student must understand so you may know how this literature affects the history and culture of a nation. In a simpler thought, Afro-Asian literature refers to the literary output of the various countries and cultures in Africa and Asia. This includes their oral traditions and from the first to the contemporary written and or published prose and poetry. Asian literature alone is diverse and vibrant. It is already composed of distinct or unlike elements or qualities that is full of life and excitement. If this is to be added by the splendor of African literature, which is very magnificent and beautiful, you'll get an enriching Afro-Asian literature. Many of the literary works are handed down by oral tradition. When we say oral tradition, these are the different stories, beliefs that a group of people shared by telling stories and talking to each other. In Africa, the lack of literacy did not make it possible to write literature down. Histories, myths, legends, including stories, dramas, riddles, songs, proverbs, and other literary works were handed by mouth from generation to generation to entertain, educate, and remind people about their past, heroic deeds of their people, ancestry, and culture. The importance comes from the fact that Afro-Asian literature is a sign of new and modern times. The other importance is that this writing is able to teach people and allow them to learn about different experiences and cultures from all over the world. It tells of the unique struggle and success of Afro-Asian people. 
In most cultures, oral histories marked the beginning of teaching history. Later, when more people were able to read and write, history became recorded in prose, plays, and textbooks. Literature plays a key role in promoting the values of tolerance, acceptance, and openness. By reading about literature of other nations, we have a better understanding of their values, beliefs, traditions, and culture. Diversity results in conflicts between and among individuals, groups, and nations. However, cultural tolerance, acceptance, and openness can help establish peace.